Hello, I'm Dave, uh, here to talk about the most exciting project I've worked on in a long time. Um, I hope you don't mind the hood, um, it's kind of cool out, uh, so I figured I'd put the hood on. Um, it's kind of windy too a little bit, uh, it just kind of keeps cutting. Anyhow, the most exciting project uh, that we've done in a very long time, if ever, and I say that because having worked with the dead now for 18 years, this is a project I never thought would happen. And I'd always wanted to, but I just never thought it would. Um, and I know we've said most exciting project ever uh, about a lot of projects, and I can think of the Europe 72 project, the 30 trips around the sun. Uh, Veneta, Oregon was an extremely exciting project, another one of those things we didn't think would happen um, because we didn't own the film at the time, but we worked out a deal. Um, and this is one of those things that, um, you know, if you're watching this, you know what I'm talking about, Cornell. Um, and not only Cornell, but also New Haven, Boston, and Buffalo. The uh, two shows that precede Cornell and The Next Night, all of which a case can be made is better than the others. Um, which is to say each of these can be considered the best of the bunch. Um, I don't know what it is. I don't know which one is the best of the bunch. I do know that at any given time I can put any of these four shows on and realize I'm listening to something special, something that is head and shoulders above even a lot of the shows on this same tour, which are, again, consistently excellent. There's very few tours where every single night is like this, but something happened on these four nights. Um, New Haven, and then Boston on the Saturday night, and then Cornell on the Sunday, and Buffalo on the Monday. Uh, every one of these shows, and, and when we released the uh, previous May 77 box set, which was the next five nights, May 11th in Minnesota, and then two in Chicago, St. Louis, and then uh, uh, Tuscaloosa, Alabama on May 17th, um, we said, we said these are phenomenal shows, and they are, but they're not quite what the previous four nights are. Um, but unfortunately, we don't have those, so we can't release them, so we're going to release... I don't want to say the next best thing because they are incredible. I don't want to disparage or downplay how great those five nights are, but there's something special about these shows. So, uh, very exciting. As I mentioned, Cornell. Cornell, it's finally coming out. Uh, this is without a doubt the most requested show we have in the uh, Grateful Dead history. Um, it's a show that Deadheads have been asking for really since the moment it started circulating, I think. Since the moment the Dead started doing archival releases in the early 90s, um, the first uh, Dick's Picks was in 93, the first um, From the Vault was in uh, 91. Cornell was on the top of this list. And to this day, uh, again, after 18 years, almost 20 years, this is the show that to this day I still get requested. I got an email yesterday morning to my vault at dead.net account uh, saying, hey, any chance you're ever going to do Cornell? It'd be really good. I still get these all the time. So I'm going to actually email that person and send him a link to this video. I want you to say, yes, we're doing Cornell. So a little background. So about four, but three years ago, four years ago, um, the people who have the Betty boards, um, they contacted us and said, we'd love to get these home. And would you be interested? And we said, well, of course, we'd love to have them. Um, and so we took a lot of time working out the uh, arrangements to make it happen, a lot of little details, stuff that's out of my kind of wheelhouse. Um, but in the last 18 months, the, the two people in particular we've been working with, Rob and Prescott, uh, and myself, and then the team at Rhino and GDP, we had one central goal, which is get these tapes home, uh, make them accessible to people. So we all approached it as deadheads, as people who just wanted this to happen, as fans of the band and as archivists and as music lovers and as people who knew the importance of these tapes. So we uh, we worked with them very closely. Like I say, the last 18 months, things really heated up. And then it was in the summer of 2016, so about six or eight months ago, when things really, really um, became obvious that this was going to happen. We just needed to work some things out. And then, you know, as a credit to, to Prescott and Rob on their side, um, and on the Rhino side, Mark Pincus, um, Mark makes things happen. And Mark, you know, saw the importance of making this happen, uh, both in terms of these four shows, this box set, the 40th anniversary of Cornell and the, the other three shows, but also in the bigger picture of what this means for the next five, 10, 20 years more of Grateful Dead archival releases and making the Dead's archive, their Dead's collection, even more complete than it already was, which was pretty complete 
missing some very important shows, obviously these ones. So we worked out um, how to make this happen and we did. And so everybody at Rhino and the Warner Archive and Grateful Dead Productions and the team of people who had uh, these tapes, um, we all just kind of said, let's just make this happen. What do we need to do? And we did. So here we are. Um, I'll also say that the last two Dave's picks, number 21, which was from Boston, uh, Boston Garden, in uh, April of 73 and the next one which comes out in May from the Felt Forum in December 71 those are also from these tapes so we're really beginning to make sure that we get them out there the, the very best shows and we've got our ears on a few more I don't know if number 23 will be one but um, sometime in the next year or so we'll definitely be hitting up for another Dave's Picks one of these but right now we're here to talk about Cornell so we decided years ago you know let's see what we can explore to make the 40th anniversary of Cornell happen and get this out. We actually looked at doing it for the um, 50th anniversary of the Grateful Dead, getting it in 2015, and we just couldn't get the timing right. But with this one, we we knew. And so we kind of always focused that we needed to make sure that this was done by October of 2016, so we'd have the proper four or five months to do the audio production before it went to the pressing plant and all that, and then came out in uh, May of 2017. And we kind of focused on that, kind of a singular focus with everyone involved, and we made it happen. So we uh, got the tapes in probably November of 2000, or yeah, November of 2017, just a few months ago. Um, straight to plant and processes for the transfer. The transfer sound incredible. Jamie Howarth, John Chester, incredible job with Plangent. Then the transfers went to uh, Jeffrey Norman, who mastered them in HD CD, of course. Uh, and then we also are doing Cornell as a vinyl release, so we did extra work on that for, uh, for the vinyl uh, production. So uh, Cornell will be a 5LP set, it will be a 3CD set on its own, and then it will be part of the 11CD box set, which is a 2CD set of um, New Haven, um, 3 of Boston, 3 of Cornell, and 3 of Buffalo. And these shows, each of them, you can look at as standalone, very special, incredible moments in Grateful Dead history, but you can also listen to them as a 10-hour chunk of, oh my god, consistent greatness, really. Um, New Haven, I've heard uh, a lot of deadheads, including one deadhead in particular, a friend of mine who is very well versed in Grateful Dead music, and he's actually quite famous, he's very highly regarded in, in Grateful Dead circles, uh, has always considered New Haven to be the one, to be the, the big one. And I can hear what he's hearing, um, but then I go and listen to Boston, and I hear the eyes of the world and the wharf rat and the incredible first set um, in Boston, the, the Peggy O and the, um, the music never stopped, and the Bertha, and it's a great Minglewood, and on and on, Tennessee Jet. Boston has some great music, but that second set with the Wharf Rat, the Eyes, the Terrapin Station, listen, some of these Jerry songs are some of the best Jerry songs ever. Uh, there's a great friend of the devil in the second set in Boston. Then you've got Cornell. When you talk about uh, definitive versions of songs, Dancing in the Streets, Scarlet Fire, Morning Dew, uh, Not Fig, uh, St. Stephen, Not Fade, St. Stephen. The versions played at Cornell, I think, and I would call them definitive versions of all of those songs. Um, and then you've got Buffalo, Helps of Franklin's. You've got this music never stopped in that first set. A Cassidy in, in Buffalo. There's a Cassidy in 77. Wow, it was so tight. But um, the one in Buffalo. And then the second set uh, with the first ever uh, estimated profit that went into something. Remember, estimated profit was only, I don't know, four months old at the time. But up until this version of Buffalo had never gone into anything. It was just a little standalone eight or nine minute song. Buffalo goes into that crazy other one uh, that also then goes into drums, goes into a monster version of Not Fade Away. The Not Fade Away is in this box set, the one in Cornell, the one in Buffalo. God, I love them. They're so good. Um, and then comes a time. And co the comes a time in Buffalo is truly... There are very few songs in Dead History that you can say are the best, one of the best things the dead ever played, period. You think of Dark Star from 21370 or Dark Star from Vanita. You think of Scarlet Fire, Morning Dew from Cornell, and you also think it comes a time from Buffalo as a song that of the thousands, how many songs did the dead play? Uh, 40, 50,000 maybe? I don't know, a lot. A lot. Tens of thousands of songs. Comes a time would certainly be one of the best standalone sing single song performances ever. And then the Uncle John's Band, oh my god, Buffalo. This is a good box set. Um, so, 
when I started working for the dead, people started asking, hey, when are you gonna release Cornell? What about Buffalo? What about New Haven? What about Boston? We also have to say the answer, we don't have the tapes. And now we do. And we have a lot of um, going through all the Betty boards that have come back. Uh, we've got to go through them. We've got to do some preservation work on them. We are probably going to rehouse a lot of them into new, cleaner boxes. A lot of the, the story of these tapes um, is quite well known. You've probably heard about the goat farm. Um, but uh, we plan to really do a good preservation job on these, uh, back them up uh, when needed, uh, but certainly get them into new housing, which is to say new boxes in some cases, uh, get them stored properly. Um, and then over the next, like we've talked about five, 10, 20 years, get some of the best ones out. And like I say, the next Dave's Picks after the Felt Forum in 71, I don't know what it's gonna be. I don't know if it's gonna be one of these tapes, but over the next year or two, you'll definitely see more of them. We've got some big ideas. And even when we started the process of bringing these tapes home three years ago, two years ago, more pointedly about six months ago, um, we really started thinking of specific projects we could do. And there are a lot. As an archivist, and a deadhead and a producer, it's exciting. Um, we've had tapes come home. We've had uh, the houseboat tapes. We had some 6970 stuff uh, from one of the roadies come back. The, uh, we've released a couple of those, that December 69 material, uh, St. Louis 70, things like that. Um, but those were small batches, anywhere from uh, 10 to 15 reels, 20 reels. This was several hundred reels. Um, this was almost a hundred shows. This was a lot of really good Grateful Dead music. Coming back to the vault, um, really helping complete the collection in a lot of cases. Now May 77 we have every show. The only show from 77 now that we don't have in the vault is um, the Forum in Los Angeles, the, uh, in Inglewood, uh, June 4th of 77, I believe. I'm trying to do the math. Oh, um, no, there's one other one. Uh, so two shows from 77 now are not in the vault, but everything else is. Um, 76, a whole bunch came back. 77, uh, 78, um, some 71, 72, 73 stuff that really completes a lot of little gaps in the collection. Uh, it's really exciting. Again, um, my passion for the Dead's music has never waned. It's always been extremely high. It's, you know, it's the art I love. It's, I don't want to say rejuvenated because I would in indicate that it's waned, it hasn't, but it, there's something special going on in the dead archival world now that over the next few years, I think we're all going to benefit by getting to hear these in this pristine quality. Um, the package design of our new box set by Masaki, the guy who did the first May 77 box, did the same thing uh, with this one, did, but even better, even nicer. And that first one is to me one of the most intricate box sets we've ever done. This one is even wow -er. It's incredible. So check it out. So if you're watching this, uh, you know you can go to dead.net, get all the information, the track lists, um, the formats. Like I say, Cornell will be on CD as a standalone three CD set. Cornell will be on a five LP set. Um, and then the four shows, New Haven, Boston, Cornell, and Buffalo, will be an 11 CD box set. Uh, limited edition and my guess is it will sell out um, it's such a good project and such a, a sought after and highly regarded and highly requested project I imagine it will sell out um, so probably pick it up sooner than later uh, the vinyl is uh, the Cornell vinyl is limited edition and the Cornell CD is not limited so you can get that probably anytime so, uh, it's kind of cold out here, so I'm going to wrap this up, but we're going to do more of these videos over the next little while. Uh, we're going to put samples up on DeadNet. We're going to do some specials on SiriusXM. Um, if you don't subscribe to SiriusXM, check that out. There's a lot of good stuff happening on there. Um, so we're going to make a lot more of this music uh, heard over the next couple months, and, and then it gets uh, released in... You'll see this on DeadNet. I'm thinking it's early May, but it's really... Um, really check it out. This is to me, once again, I, I, I say this often, but as an archivist and as a deadhead and a person who helps get to produce these things, this is the most exciting project I've worked on. This is the one that I've wanted to do, but I never thought would happen. And so the fact that it's happening now, 40th anniversary of Cornell, wow, exciting time. So thank you for listening and check it out. It's available now at deadnut, at dead.net. And uh, it's a really good one. So, uh, let's see.
nice calm out today. Um, thanks for listening. I'm Dave, and check it out May 77, New Haven May 5th, Boston May 7th, Cornell May 8th, and Buffalo May 9th, 1977. Four of the most sought after Grateful Dead shows ever played, um, ever recorded, are now released finally on CD um, and other formats. So check it out. We're excited. I hope you are too. I'm really excited about this one. Like this is, um, it's been hard to contain my excitement and not um, not talk about it too much because we wanted to uh, surprise everyone with this big announcement. So thanks for listening and we'll see you around.